Welcome to Tom's Messy On Vlog, episode 6. Now I've had some emails, I've had some mail about the vlog, which is exactly what I was hoping for, so thank you very much for those of you who have uh, written to, to encourage me to say you're enjoying it. I haven't had any hate mail yet, so I'm going to persist with this project. Um, but I've also had some suggestions, some questions, things that you'd like to hear me talk about, um, questions you've got about the whole process of learning this thing, and um, just generally about music learning indeed. So some of those suggestions actually correlate very neatly with things I was going to talk about. In any case, for example, there's been a request I talk about silence, and in the last episode I talked a little bit about managing the gaps between sections. There'll be more of that in subsequent episodes. Now, what I was going to talk about today is exactly what I've been asked to do, as it happens, uh, by somebody who wrote to me. The question was, do you ever feel like you're never going to get it finished? You know, uh, this, this person is having a similar experience with learning another piece uh, and is wondering, do you ever, you know, wonder whether you're going to get to the performance, um, the performance date and not, not actually have it ready? And of course the answer to that is yes, and I'm sure every musician's had that. Coincidentally, I had decided I was going to talk about that, well, talk about something almost that uh, this week, because last week, the end of last week, as it happens, I was having a phone conversation with my dear friend and colleague Daniel Malt, and um, we were talking about this this very issue. There's, there's a point at which I reach, and I think Dan says he finds the same thing, um, uh, and I dare say other musicians do as well, where you feel like you should know it, you feel like you know it, you feel like the music's familiar, but it's just not quite... Um, you don't feel at ease with it yet, and things are going wrong, and it just it just doesn't feel sort of ready. And sometimes that phase can be a bit disconcerting, because it can come after previous phases where you feel like, oh, this is going well, and then all of a sudden it just doesn't feel like it's getting over the, the line. And it can be really quite frustrating and demoralising. I've got to be honest, that's exactly where I've got with the Livre de saint Um It's, well, okay, so the issue here is the difference... It's the, this is the interface, the sort of the great boundary between two different types of preparation, I would say. This is just my spin on this. Um, there's a difference between technical practice, learning the notes, and performance practice. I don't mean historically informed performance here. What I mean is literally practicing, performing, getting used to playing the piece from start to finish. Your brain's doing different things, and I'm going to give you a little bit of an example. This is a bit of bird song from the end of movement three. Now, in learning this stuff, I will be playing hands separately. Uh, I'm going to use the registration Messiaen asks for. I wouldn't actually practice on this sound because it would be a bit distracting. But anyway, uh, so you might play it slowly. Oh, and then obviously I play the left hand part. I might play both together slowly. I may try, because it's a sort of a single line of music in each hand, I might try doing what I call chords practice. I may spend time just practicing the hand shapes. And so on and so forth. The thing is, all the way through that process, what I am at da in danger of doing, and certainly that's the, the at the beginning of the process of learning, I'd certainly be doing it. I'd be reading every single note, be thinking about every single note, trying to control every single muscular movement in the hands, or, or the feet if there's a pedal part. Um, worrying about getting all the notes right, trying to control everything. Um, and that's fine, uh, well not the worry necessarily, but trying to get the notes right, working, thinking about what your muscles are doing, where the fingers are going, if something's going wrong, what is it that's causing it to go wrong? Is your finger going too far to the right or too, you know, whatever. Um, all of that stuff's great, but you, uh, that's what lays the foundations for a performance. It, it helps you to learn the notes. Now, the thing is, in performance, you can't possibly control that. You can't possibly think about absolutely everything that's going on. I mean, just this little bit of bird song, it's only in two parts. It's by far, you know, by no means one of the hard bits of the piece, but... And so on and so forth. I can't possibly think about every single note during that, so I have to practice not doing. Now, how do I do that? Well, there are various different techniques I employ, and I'm bound to switch the camera off and remember others and have to come and do another episode about this. But um, first thing, I, I, I have to think about, well, where's my brain going to check in? Where am I actually going to think about where my hands are? Because you can't think about it the whole time. You have to sort of let your subconscious just get on with it, let, let your muscle memory get on with it. Um, so I'm, I sometimes define think points, I call them. If you look in one of my scores, you sometimes see TP written, TP. Typically, a great example would be the first note of a bar, or the first note of each half bar, or something like that. And so that'll be what I think about, as opposed to every single note. I mean, for example, a, you know, a really big scale going up, I might check in where the thumbs go down, or, or something like that, but not think about it other than that, because you, you simply can't if it's a fast scale. So that's one thing I do. Um, another thing I do is I will practice with my eyes shut. 
teach myself, teach my eyes not to stare at the notes I'm playing. It's no good staring at the notes I'm playing. I need to be looking ahead or, or, or not staring at the notes at all, perhaps. Um, so I work, essentially working on my memory a little bit, so I'll play passages with my eyes shut. Uh, and this can be related to the think points thing, uh, because I might open my eyes slightly and look at the bit I've you know, defined as the think point and then close my eyes again and play. There are other things. I mean, I might actually look at my hands. I know our piano teachers, when we were five, told us not to look at our hands, but sometimes that's more helpful than reading the notes. Because I think what you what you can sometimes try to do if you're feeling tense is you can um, effectively try to sight read the piece, try to read the notes. Well, that, that's, that's that's useless in performance. That's just not going to work. The whole thing is going to work, going to fall apart. The other thing I do a lot is sing. I sing along. So when I play this thing in concert, what I'll probably be doing under my breath is going. <laughs> What that's doing is helping me to engage with the music, with how it sounds and how I want it to come across, as opposed to thinking about what my fingers are doing. And I found that technique really useful. I know there are other performers out there who sing while they play. Um, and it can help be helpful for other musical reasons as well, to get you thinking about breathing and phrasing and shaping and all that sort of stuff. Um, so those are some a series of starters for 10, if that's possible. Can you have starter for 10 in plural? Anyway, th those are some thoughts on making the break from uh, in, into performance mode, basically, because I think that is the issue. This person that emailed me and you asked about, do you ever feel like you're never going to get it done? Uh, yes, I do, and it's at this stage in the learning process where I sort of feel like I've done months of work learning the notes, but I just can't seem to make the leap from carefully playing it to make sure all the notes are right to playing it, at, you know, at speed, you know, with registrations into a space. Um, Blah, 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 blah. It's basically the issue is I try to micromanage, I try to control, and I need to teach my brain not to do that. Fundamentally, um, well, okay, somebody I know, uh, now dead, um, uh, an old relation of mine, he'd been a BBC producer uh, many years ago, and he'd done a programme with Alfred Brendel. And he asked, this, this relation of mine wasn't a musician, he asked Alfred Brendel, how do you play from memory? And apparently Brendel's answer was, well, I, I just sing the music in my head. My, you know, I've learnt the notes, my fingers know what they're doing, I just let them get on with it. I sing the music in my head and let my muscle memory just get on with it. And that's how I play from memory. And it's basically that um, that I try to do. Even though I'm generally playing from a score, that's basically what I try to do when I am performing. Whew, I think that's covered most of this. I'm sure I'll get through this battle, um, worrying about whether I'm actually going to get it done in time. Um, the other thing I should add, actually, is you've got to kind of maintain a sense of perspective. I mean, this concert is, at the time I'm recording this vlog, the concert is nine, ten weeks away. This doesn't need to be absolutely ready till two or three weeks before. I mean, for my peace of mind, it would be great if it was already now, but then I'd spend nine or ten weeks just trying to keep it at the, the highest level, which it inevitably would start to degrade because I get fed up with it. And I find managing that as stressful as not having it learnt completely ten weeks in advance. I mean, I have got it learned. It's just that mental thing of getting comfortable with it. There are a couple of passages which disconcert me because I can't quite get them right yet, I feel. Anyway, another thing that can help, by the way, recording yourself and listening back. Sometimes it can be a rude awakening. Sometimes it can be reassuring. Anyway, I've not played much music today. So why don't I just play the next line, the end of the movement three that I was just playing some bird song from because it's nice and relaxing. <laughs> Tune in next time for episode 7.